Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Beck and this is It's Not About Us and we are proud to be on CPAC now and all over the country with different shows. So we love you all, we're so happy you're here. And as usual, you know my favorite word by now, excited. I'm excited today to have two of dear friends, two wonderful people that are fighting in their own way as we all should be to save this country. And uh, to my right, is a man, so we'll start to my left. <laughs> Ladies we first. have fun on this show, yes, okay? We do. We, we do. try and have fun because this is about, it's not about us, it's about the good things that are happening in the country. We're going to hit every tough subject there is today, but ultimately, we're trusting in God for the right answers. Amen. And so, Kathleen Wynn, my dear friend, who is running for Congress in Congressional District 6 in Arizona. Right, is sitting on my left, <laughs> and Michael Mishar, a very wonderful young man. I call him young because I'm so much older, you know. <laughs> um, but Michael ha is a retired Border Patrol, and he's done so many things for our country, and he's given so much. You know, I love it, Michael and, and Kathleen, that we live in a country where we have such wonderful men serving their country in so many different forms. It's not only our military, which God knows right now they need our help. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, struggling over in Israel along with our, our family. That's, that's who the Jewish people in Israel are. They're our family. Yeah. And so we're struggling with them, and we are having casualties, and, and it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are also working on a border that has been made open by the current White House, uh, um, what would you call them, renters? No. Leasers? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can say what we can call them, so we'll just move from that. Yeah, we'll move on from that. <laughs> but anyways, because of that, the border's been open. And we're dealing with so much. And so I thought it'd be great to have Michael here who has, you know, his fingers in the pie in the border still to this day. Thank you so much, Michael, yes, for hanging in there. And I've met a lot of his friends as well that they've never walked away. They may have retired, but they never walked away. They still are understanding that this is about our country. This is about their family our families. It's about the people that we love and know, our neighbors. And what does God say? Love your neighbor as, thyself. as you love yourself. And so that's what we're going to do today and share some stories. And Michael, um, I know I teased you about being a guy and not being first, but I want to start with some recent things that happened to you. Michael had already been severely injured on the border and went through a horrible crisis, but we don't have time to get into that today. But we're gonna talk about what happened to him recently. What's this been, about two and a half months ago? Am I yeah, guessing? Yeah, I think it was like August 5th, maybe. Okay, wow. Wow. okay. Yeah. And uh, this was after Michael and I had met and talked and was planning some things. And the next thing I know, I don't hear from him, and I thought, well, I better call and see where we stand with stuff. And then I heard this story. Michael, can you please tell them Oh, before you do, one more last thing. I am sitting in a studio in Oro Valley, Arizona that is a quarter of a mile at the very most from where this event took mm. place. Yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's right. right. And this is something that I want you all to know. If you're feeling too comfortable with what's going on in the country, I don't mean to shake people's lives up, but you need to be aware of what's really happening. So, Michael, please. Yeah, yeah so it was on or about uh, August 5th. I was going, my daughter just won her volleyball championship. Yay. So we were at a friend's house, and my wife's like, hey, you know, can you go get some salad or whatnot? So I go to, uh, can I say the store, the actual store? I don't see why you can't say okay, Safeway. Okay, well, it was Safeway, <laughs> right? You never know nowadays. I yeah. don't want to offend anyone. But it was at Safeway. I, I went into the store, and I was shopping, and then there was a, a really nice lady coming down the aisle, and she had a Trump lanyard on. 
And she said, excuse me. And I said, well, anyone that likes Trump, you're okay in my book. And we just giggled, right? And I heard some commotion. I heard some voices, something behind me. I really didn't pay too much attention. And uh, I was wearing a, uh, a Border Patrol hat. Like, uh, not the official hat, yeah. but just one, just retired, just supporting, right? Right, right. Yeah, so um, I go to the register, I go out to the car, and I'm just shutting the back uh, of the car, the hatchback, and I turn around, and my hat goes flying off, and before I know it, there's two really tall guys are on me, and we're just fighting, and I'm like, man, I've I've had a lot of surgeries, I'm getting older, I don't have a whole lot of time to... to keep my adrenaline going so anyway um i fought back you de you defended yourself just, with yeah, yeah. who wouldn't right okay yeah. yes and uh it ended up in my favor um, both of the gentlemen later um took off and there was just blood everywhere and i'm like what's going on i mean yeah we were fighting we were scrapping so i get into the car and i was about to call oro valley pd when when they both took off and uh, I looked, and uh, I don't know, a two-inch slash on my face. They knifed uh, you. They knifed me. Yeah. What I thought was a punch was a knife, and I'm looking in there, and I could see one of my teeth kind of through, through my cheek. Mm. Mm. And I was just like, did this just really happen? So I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to tell my wife because I'm, I'm a <laughs> magnet for this type of stuff. Yeah. She's like, what now? I'm like, well, I'm going to be a little late. I got to go to the house and apply some super glue to some – <laughs> to my face yeah. uh, and uh, close it up. So anyway, I went and I picked him up and uh, we, we talked about it. And me and my wife were just blown away of just a simple, ex go right ahead. Anyone that At a local grocery store, and you know the name. I mean, it could have been a fries. It could have been a H Bashes sure, sure. or whatever. Y you know, that isn't the point. The point is, it was innocently at a local grocery store in one of the nicest areas of Tucson, Absolutely. up in Oro Valley, yeah. okay, where, you know, we're far from the city. Uh, we are, you know, we're not near downtown or anything. We live in a lovely community. It, you usually can walk around and just feel super safe. And I have to tell you, you got the nice version from him. <laughs> I got the gory details. <laughs> Trust me. There was a lot of gory details. He's being nice, and, and I appreciate that from my audience. But at the same time, you need to understand that this is one man, and he's not a little man, okay? He's not a little man. He's not five foot two. He's not five foot nine. You are how tall? Six three. He is six three. And you said those other guys were tall. So that's yeah. what and, I was saying. And he said, tall men, yeah. he said nothing more than if you, anybody who has a Trump lanyard on is okay by me or okay yeah, in, my in my book, book or I forget right? the exact yeah, yeah. words. And so just mentioning someone that is should be being revered and respected, okay, mm -hmm. for all of the fact that he was a president of the United States and is running for president of the United States, mm -hmm. to say his name and get that kind of a reaction. And if he could do, they could do that to a big guy like him. Mm. The rest of you couldn't have hit the guy in the knee, the first one and made him run, and caused the other one to uh, leave in pain. You couldn't have done that. And these were big guys, okay? Mm -hmm. And they thought the two of them together had it made. They were fighting against somebody who had already had so much trauma, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, yes, ma'am. And stuff that, um, you know, you guys have heard of PTSD. Some of you, I'm sure, know family or friends that deal with it. But you don't understand, unless you have a friend like I do, to know that it literally can take you back. In a mm. situation like that, you can end up right back in that war zone yeah. which that's what it is whether you're out in the field by the border or you're out in vietnam or when they were out in any other country you are in a war zone where it's your life or theirs and the first time he only lived by god's grace Amen. by god's help and grace Amen. and so for him to have that kind of a reaction natural 
and, and he's he's had all kinds of therapy because oh, of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because this is not fun and games. This isn't something you hear. This is not wimping out. This is not a man who would ever wimp out. Trust me, I know. <laughs> and so he's still fighting the good fight. Well, and, and, and first of all, thank you for just everything you've done up until Amen. The, yes, I, I know your background and your record and uh and i'm glad that you weren't reactivated that you that you in the moment when attacked you knew exactly what to do whether muscle memory from all your training and being in law enforcement or not it's it's i'm glad you're here and and i have to say it's october well, november 1st and you can't even tell like you can't tell you're a great super gluer yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and, and uh, i know you should maybe go into plastic surgery right? you, huh? you, your face looks fabulous <laughs> we uh, could use it <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know whole new whole new product line but uh, the point I, that shouldn't be lost is that in a grocery store that, you know, Oro Valley is like Scottsdale, uh, right. you know, uh, very wonderful. Your com the community up here is, uh, is very affluent and that you couldn't say something nice to someone that really was none of their business mm. and that you got assaulted for that. Um, uh, you know, and, and they want to make out the people that supported Trump as being radical and crazy. Uh, you know, they should look in a mirror. And right. it, Amen. And yeah, I'm right. really, I, you know, so I'm glad you're okay. It's great to see you. Um, and but I think it reminds us we all need to be super vigilant. Right. Uh, that mm -hmm. that right. you could say something just off the cuff, and then you could find yourself being knifed in a parking lot. And and how tragic is that? And that's not the country that any of us grew up in. And so. you know, it's really neat though, too, Kathleen and and uh, Michael that. People need to understand, we live from right here in this office. You're about an hour and a half from the border. Yeah. Okay. Yes, true. And people all over this country now, now, though, are experiencing what that's like. We had a friend fly in last weekend. And when he left and he went to get on his plane, now this is broad day, daylight in the morning, he was infuriated because he had to stand in line while a bunch of people that had just walked across the border had nothing but a piece of paper, mm -hmm. no ID, no nothing, was put on the plane in front of him. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, I dealt with that when I flew back from France and landed in Atlanta. They put us on a plane and we literally had two people sitting even up in first class yelling and screaming and standing and throwing their clothes and everything on a five-hour flight. Oh, wow. Okay? And that doesn't count all the people that were all through that plane. So I, my heart goes out to everyone involved. Mm. I mean, look at the steward and stewardess and the people that are dealing with all of this every day. You know, I mean, there is so much more to this story, but my main focus was to get out your local, every day, in and out, during the day, in a grocery store. Please, I hate to have to say these words, but everybody, be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, Pay attention yeah. of who's in your presence. Be careful about what you say near others. Isn't that awful that we have to say that in our country, Kathleen? Yeah, that we ha we don't we have freedom of speech, but then you have to be careful how you use it. Because if where? you're saying in where and, and and who would think a grocery store checkout line is a place that you can't say I you know I, anybody who is wearing something. I mean, uh, he wasn't even in the checkout line. They were walking up and down the aisles, and he let her go first, and they happened to be in the aisle behind. Him. So he hadn't even checked out yet. Oh. It's crazy. And they so they st stayed around. They stalked you. And mm -hmm. stalked him and went outside and waited for him to come to his car. Now, that is something, like I said, breaks my heart. But we have to be honest. And people, you must be aware of your su surroundings. You must be careful about who's listening and who's watching you. Absolutely. And if you're being stalked. And it can happen, sadly, obviously. This is the obvious truth. It can happen anywhere in this country, in any store. Absolutely. We've heard so many horrible stories over the last, what, four or five years of continual 
outbreaks of hate and anger. And so many of those people have come from over the border. So it just amazes me uh, that we have to have a show like this. Well, and, and you know, in our grocery stores now uh, and uh, pharmacies, so many products are now locked up. So, yes. and we're we're being penalized because of all the shoplifting. Right. So we we have, and no one does anything with the criminal element at this point. We, you know, police don't arrest. I, I'm sure that you could give a vague description, but. Uh, so I'm sure they haven't been arrested or, or if, have they been arrested? No, no, it wouldn't, no. Do, you would, wouldn't, yeah, I hate to say it, but they it wouldn't, wouldn't be do any good. They, they wouldn't be prosecuted. So that was right, my next right, point. Right. Is There's that, not enough jail space. There is not. And no. And, and the sad thing too and crime is, is rampant, right? Yeah. And these people turn around and they point the finger back at you then and make up some story. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a lie these days. Right. Everybody's got an excuse for why they did something. You know, it's sad. It's scary. And so all I can say to y'all is thank you for being here for the show. Keep this in your the back of your mind. Please be aware. Take care of yourselves. Give all your attention and time that you have to the God of this world who is the one that's going to save us from all of this. Amen. And pray to him and know that I pray for you always. God bless you and thanks for being here. Thank you, too. Yes, Thank you. Absolutely.